Did you know that nature is serving as an inspiration for solving engineering problems? From modern wind turbines to airplanes to house designs, a growing field of study known as biomimicry is proving that nature is a very good teacher and probably one we should rely on a little bit more. I talked to a biomimicry expert and construction engineer to get versed on these engineering marvels. You're watching iHeart STEM. Today we'll tackle one STEM topic I learned from experts. Just four key questions with each answer under one minute or less. Biomimicry is asking what would nature do in a given situation to solve a problem, either from how it solved it before or how it would solve it. It was first coined a term in 1982 in scientific literature in a chemistry thesis, although examples probably trace back to Leonardo da Vinci or even earlier to ancient Roman times from their water supply system, which shows as an early example of biomimicry. It's grown in popularity since 1997 when there was a book published on the topic, but it's still very much in early phases. So what is biomimicry? Well, biomimicry is applying nine principles to solve various engineering and other problems. The principles are nature runs on sunlight, uses only the energy it needs, fits form to function, recycles everything, rewards cooperation, banks on diversity, depends on location expertise, curbs excess from within, and taps the power limits. Biomimicry feels very booky, so let's break it down in an example we can all understand. Charging our phone. When you charge your phone, you use power, but you're really using energy, and that energy is supplied by an energy supply company. Now, in the state of Tennessee, the energy supply company is the TVA, and 14% of the energy that's supplied by the TVA in Tennessee is through hydropower. Hydropower is where you have a dam, you release water, which generates energy, which then you and I consume. The problem the TVA had is they needed more energy at night than what the dam was able to provide because they were using the dam throughout the day as well. So what they decided to do was apply the concepts of biomimicry and introduce solar power. But the problem is solar power is dependent on sunlight, which you don't have at night, which is when they needed the power. So they applied the concepts of biomimicry and said, let's use the solar power in the daytime to move the water back upstream and we can release it at night when we really need it getting the power we need. Aztecs and Incas would shape stones into the shape of corn on the cob because it leads to a more stable stone structure. Solar fields are arranged in the shape of a sunflower versus a row because it leads to a more efficient solar field. My interviewer's friend actually studied ants as part of his computer science class. Ants are very binary, which is similar to a computer, and they realized by studying the behavior of ants, they could figure out the most efficient way to test programs. My favorite example, though, is how Japan studied the root system of mushrooms. Japan took food and they placed it at representative spots of what would be the Tokyo subway system. They put mycelium spores at the center and they watched the way that the root system grew, which ended up replicating the Tokyo subway system. They believe that this can be used to map out improved technology systems. And then hot off the press, cattail stems. They've been studying them, the plant, not the animal. And they believe that they can take some of the properties of cattail stems, commercialize them and use it for insulation. It's a good question, but like a lot of things in life, it comes down to money. Biomimicry has proved to be a very reliable and effective way to solve for engineering problems. But when you look at that short-term cost-benefit analysis, it's a little bit harder to justify. Biomimicry involves a much more significant investment up front, both time and money. Take an example in construction. If you're going to apply the principles of biomimicry to construction, now you have a whole other set of people that you need to involve in your project, like biological scientists, potentially, or ecologists. So for an investor who's the one who's actually paying for that through their time or their money, the question becomes, how do we motivate those investors to want to actually consider biomimicry and more projects? Now, it's not an easy question or a problem to solve, but when you think about some of the statistics for some of these industries, it feels like we maybe should be a little bit more motivated to apply the concepts of biomimicry. Take construction as an example. It is the number one cause of landfill waste, carbon dioxide emission, as well as natural resource depletion. I know four minutes just barely scraped the surface of the topic, but go out there, research more. One of the coolest things to me is how many different fields of study this incorporates. You could be interested in history, like my interviewer, or you could be a scientist, an engineer, an architect. All of this is wrapped up in biomimicry.
I'll see you next week. If you are all in for biomimicry and want a little bonus material, look up Earthship. I didn't have time to go into this example, but this is where housing designs address all human needs. It is so cool.